you like this episode, please subscribe, share with others, rate and review so we can continue to bring you great programming. This is The Thing About Cars, a podcast for car enthusiasts and the people who love them. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Thing About Cars. I'm Mickey Desai. Around the table, we've got the old gang. Dave, how are you? Old? Who are you calling old? (laughs) Don. I resemble that remark. (laughs) Misty? (laughs) Hello, everyone. (laughs) Hashtag, I'm in this picture and I don't like it. (laughs) (laughs) And Ben. We are the old new generation. <laughs> I I mean, you know, we've been doing this for how long? This is, the, you know, this is an old gang, not, a, not an old gang of old people. Right. <laughs> Speak for yourself, whippersnapper. I'm going to pout for the rest of the episode. Oh, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I still get mistaken for being 30 something in public. So uh, wow. y- y'all can bite me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. I usually get mistaken for being Nathan Lane in public. (laughs) That's kind of cool, actually. (laughs) That's hilarious. All right. So uh, we're going to start this episode, this special episode, special ish episode, I guess, uh, with uh, a moment of grand trivia auto. And then Dave's got something special for us that we're calling. What are we calling it, Dave? I'll tell you in a second. I have to make it up. Okay. (laughs) That's cool. So our trivia question for the day is. Who made the last car produced with a rumble seat, a.k.a. a dicky seat in British parlance, also called a mother-in-law seat? Was that, and we all want to know what we're talking about by this, right? A mother-in-law seat, a a dicky seat, or a rumble seat, right? So was who made the last car produced with one? Was that Triumph, Chevrolet, Ford, or Plymouth? We'll answer that that question at the end of the episode. Um, Do I need to read that again? Anybody? You're all good? No. Oh, All right. good. All right. so, I mean, we know what it is. We're just we're just ruminating over it. That's yeah. Okay. I I never knew it was called a mother-in-law suit seat. I didn't either. I definitely know the rumble seat very well, and I, yeah. I can tell you my story later. So okay. All right. Very cool. So, uh, Dave, what are we going to do? So I think well, by way of context, we were on Facebook last night, um, and this is the first time the gang has been back together for for a couple of weeks. Uh, and I and, and candidly, I'd missed everybody, you know, yeah. and, and was as I w- was connecting with everyone briefly, I thought of wouldn't it be fun to imagine the five of us on like, a you know, buddy movie road trip type thing. And then I thought there's a an old, old far side where the sound of that sounds like a horrible made for TV movie starring Mr. T and Burt Conby. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, let, let, wait, let's tell our listener who Burt Convy is because we all know who Mr. T is. Yeah, well, Burt Convy was an actor and game show host in the 1970s. Right. Right. He had sort of this black afro looking hairdo and he was on the love boat. And he, I think his claim to fame was was uh, the newlywed game. No, that, was Bob, that was Bob Eubanks. Burt oh, Convy was Eubanks? Was yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I cannot tell you what valuable piece of information got shoved out of my brain from the (laughs) fact that I could hold on to Bob Eubank's name. (laughs) So so anyway, we're calling this game Road Film. And and, basically, last night, I challenged my colleagues to come up with their dream road film that they would be in. And I asked them for five well four things but they're each they get a point for each one and then a point an additional point if they get the special bonus the four things that that we're going to vote on who has the best is first off the car and why did you pick that car the second is the trip starting point route and destination the third is the co-star and why did you pick them the fourth is what's the goal of the trip to begin with and then lastly, the bonus point is if you can identify the unexpected plot twist. Oh. Everyone clear on this? Right. I think so. Everyone's ruminating. Would anyone like to volunteer to go first or shall I just pick at random? I think you should pick at random because I've been thinking about this for a couple of days or at least uh, since you've 
proposed 24 hours since, yeah, <laughs> yeah since friday friday yeah, and, a couple uh, days since last night at 10 <laughs> well no it was friday night at 10 and now it's I mean, you're right 24 hours i'll shut up yeah. and uh um well 36 I, if you want to be generous yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway yes please pick okay. it random dave yeah i'm gonna pick it random and i think eeny meeny miny ben and the reason I'm picking Ben is because Ben and I, when we did this a couple of episodes ago about road trip movies, we both identified the Gumball Rally as as one of our favorite road trip movies. So, yeah, Benjamin, and, you go first. And I actually did not run with that idea because I figured it was so obvious that everybody else would. Um, <laughs> and had I had a little more time to work on this, it would be better. I'm going to bomb this completely, but... Uh, because I, I I drew a complete blank until about an hour ago, uh, <laughs> but I actually in that hour came up with two ideas that both kind of suck. But we'll see, uh, <laughs> see how succinct I can be. Uh, the first <laughs> nice, one, uh, nice lead up. I can't imagine why you're not in PR. <laughs> right, right. Um, but uh, anyway, the the first idea was kind of a uh, a satirical you know totally schlocky comedy uh send up of james bond um in which if i maybe worked really hard to channel adam west i might be able to play the lead role uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the the car would be a uh, jensen interceptor uh i'm not sure who all the co-stars would be uh, you, you have three very important roles here you've got to have a good girl a bad girl and a villain uh, and then you've got to have people like the spy boss, you know, the M role or whatever. Uh, the the bad guy, I think, would have to be played by some older male actor who is very well established at very serious gruff roles. Uh, and this is a comedy, remember? So uh, it's gonna be that'll be perfect. I don't know who because the other reason I'm gonna suck at this is I don't keep up very well with actors. I'm not. I could give you a great cast from like 30 years ago, maybe. I don't know, but. Uh, Today, I have no idea. The good girl, I'm not sure who. I think Sandra Bullock would be great as the bad girl because she's known for such wholesome roles. <laughs> That'd be really cool. Um, as far as the trip, I'm not really sure. Maybe put it in the United States and make our, our super spy a complete fish out of water. Um, especially if he's like, you know, kind of an aging Cold War dinosaur or something. Um, now, the other idea that I had, <clears throat> and this one's a little more developed i guess have a uh, like a coming of age road trip in the united states the lead would be you know a young nerdy male type uh he's a nerdy boy college maybe it's the year before he starts college uh his his disconnected parents encourage him to take a road trip just to get him out of the house they make the excuse that it'll be character building uh he steals his dad's trans am to do it which is you know maybe bitching looking but not that spectacular under the hood uh he wrecks it early in well sort of wrecks it gets in trouble with it somewhere in a farm field in iowa or something this crusty old coot says well if, if, if you'll give it to me i'll give you my car and i'll fix it and the kid in a panic says okay deal the old coot's car turns out to be a somewhat tired 61 valiant uh, you'll have to look this up to see what I mean. Um, <laughs> so you put yeah. a lot of thought of this into this, man. And it all came to me in like a minute. <laughs> man, <laughs> It's somewhere like right before he wrecks the car, he's camped out in a state park somewhere. And this woman, and I'm not sure who would play her, uh, some very wholesome, but hot, you know, 40 ish actress. I don't know. Uh, she would ply him with cheap Chardonnay and they would get it on in the tent. And then all through the rest of the, this happens early in the film because that all through the rest of the movie, he gets into increasingly bad scrapes in different places. He's just an innocent young nerd who's just lost his virginity in a tent uh, while drunk on cheap Chardonnay. What? No, no, go ahead. <laughs> you're making a signal there. The, the, the audience can't see this. No, but, no. Uh, yeah. I'm just... I think that's because actually you're describing how Mickey lost his virginity. It's true. It's Could be. <laughs> Could be, but yeah, so he's, he's just being his innocent, you know, dweebish self as he makes this trip across the country and falls backwards into increasingly bad scrapes. And every time he narrowly escapes them, he sees the, the, the girl from the, or the woman from the tent, 
you know, flash by and give him a wink and a smile or something. She's driving some kind of high end convertible with a creamy white interior, her hair blowing perfectly in the wind, of course, uh, in ways that real convertibles don't actually make you do because of the aerodynamics. Uh, anyway, so he keeps seeing her every time he barely gets out of a scrape and he finally makes it to, you know, the West Coast and something, blah, 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 something deep and emotional. He catches up with her somewhere. And he's, he's like, uh, he's like, yeah, who are you? Who are you? And all this, and you know, says, you, you, you kind of messed up my mind back there, but I keep seeing you in all these places and now I'm obsessed and all this. And he goes into this whole pouring his heart out dweebish thing. And here's where the twist is. She confesses that she is actually his guardian angel. And she says, and yeah, I know the thing in the tent, the man upstairs is probably going to fire me from this gig for doing that. But you know, Hey, I used to be human. So yeah, a little bit of a letdown. Used to be there, human. But, yeah. <laughs> for an hour i didn't put this much effort into my thesis <laughs> like i said this came to me in about a minute and you need to write this down this you, is, do. Yeah. you do yeah i'm impressed <laughs> i think we're good because you got a bonus in there and you got multiple cars and a whole cast not just a minute. i think we're gonna give ben a five for this one. Oh, nice five points well thank you i don't know what that's out of but <laughs> i don't i don't know either pie <laughs> 42. <laughs> Speaking of 42, I think our next cine- cinema file should be Dawn. Okay, so I misunderstood the premise. I thought we were supposed to choose an existing road trip movie. Well, recast so it. Ben- <laughs> <laughs> and as Ben was talking, so I was like, okay, well, I'll make up a story. And here you go. <laughs> so my, I, my road trip movie would not be... Um, it would kind of be a spy thing, but it wouldn't be, there would be romance in there. Um, but here we go. So a widowed person, woman in her fifties, um, goes to her high school reunion in Europe because she went to school in Europe and, um, she actually meets up with her widowed boyfriend from high school. Who's, who's also widowed. And they, you know, because they're going around this reunion and everybody else has got their spouses and their children and they never have kids. And so um, they both had, you know, like, what do we do with the money that we inherited from our dead spouses kind of thing? And uh, they they said, hey, you know, we we've always really liked Porsche. So let's go to Stuttgart after our reunion. So they start in Heidelberg, which is the, you know, where they went to high school and they go down to uh, Stuttgart and they just buy a Porsche and they start driving all over Europe, getting into all kinds of strange and bizarre trouble. Uh, You know, in Paris, they, you know, make many faux pas um, (laughs) and then they, they try to, you know, do the channel, but end up having like anxiety for trying to get through the channel. Um, one of them ends up saying, you know, they've, they're claustrophobic, so they can't do the channel. And uh, then they, they kind of make their way, make their way over to the Netherlands. Uh, and neither one of them has ever done uh, any type of, of drugs ever in their life. And so they, you know, indulge in some, um, some marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> and end up, you know, again, it's not funny. It's kind of like it gets, it's kind of like a sad, like, why didn't you do this when you were in your teens kind of thing. Um, <laughs> and so then they they make their way down, um, you know, trying to break the speed uh, limit several times. And as they get to um, the border between, um, in Czechoslovakia, between Slovakia and Czech, um, all of a sudden, there's all of these things that start showing up helicopters and weird things that are happening and um and they they kind of make a few stops and 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 the guys like why are we being followed constantly what's going on here and then all of a sudden they make a turn down to Greece and they ditch the Porsche and here's where the plot twist come in comes in the whole time she's a spy for the CIA she had to pick up some intel in Slovakia about this whole thing with Russia and Ukraine and get it down to a boat in in Greece, and that's where I kind of I don't know where I want to where I want to end here because it's it's all about deception and and kind of ending up with the wrong people the whole time, and now they're with the right people, but it's it's just kind of a crazy thing. So there you go. There's my story. That's my road trip. The only thing you have missed is your casting. 
Well, now that now I actually has the casting because everybody has always told me I either sound or look like Sarah Bull- or Sandra Bullock. So she's going to play me. Um, I I really have to say that the guy is going to probably be. Um, um, oh gosh, now I can't think of his name. Um, ah, oh, John it's Travolta. Not you and McGregor. It's um, Judd, Liam Judd, Neeson. Who? Not Liam Neeson. Um, the guy that's playing Dumbledore now, Jude Law. Jude. Oh, yes. Jude Law. Jude Law. Um. So, <laughs> I mean, Chris, I know. so it'd be Sandra Bullock, Jude Law. Um, you know, along the way, I'd love to throw in, like in in Paris. Um, I I'd love to throw in somebody that ended up being a professional entertainer. So I would put maybe Kristen Chenoway in because she's one of my sorority sisters. So got to throw Chris. That's funny. And uh, I think that it would be really fun to have like a spy boss, kind of like a Q or or somebody <laughs> fun like that. So I probably Liam Neeson would um, be kind of an older good. Do so, you know what? I would have given you a five on that one if you had made Kristen Chenna with the spy boss. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that would have been great! Yeah, Don gets Don gets four points. All right, yeah, Yeah, and I'm going to deduct a point for saying chunnel so many times. That word grates on my nerves like you would not believe. (laughs) Ben, you like, yeah, okay, 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 Mickey. And I literally just made that up as I was speaking. I'm I'm like on the fly there because I had the premise completely wrong. So what the heck? Right. Mickey, you're up. Oh, goodness. Okay. So I wrestled with this quite a bit over the last 36 hours. Thank, thank you, Ben, for the math. Um, and I couldn't, I, I mean, I was sitting here wrestling to try to come up with something that wasn't just cliche. And I decided in the end to just say, screw it. And here's, here's what I've got. The car is one of two things. It is either, in fact, it could be both things and you'll see why in a minute. Um, a early 70s era Chevelle SS or a late 60s era GTO, preferably convertible. And and just because I've always been enamored of both of these cars um, and I like the way they look and I've always wanted to just have one and drive one and have fun in it. The trip starts in Miami and ends in LA. Uh, and the objective is to get there as quickly as possible to retrieve some papers that need to be delivered to, I don't know, another entity. I'm like, I'm like, you know, this, this weird courier service that has all kinds of different missions that I need to perform in this car. My co-star, this is the only thing that remained constant throughout all my tossing around of this idea. My co-star is Monica Bellucci. <laughs> Misty's like half squinting. What was that? <laughs> I didn't really expect this to turn into a therapy session. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Yes. Thank yes, you, Dave. Monica. Right. And no reason why. I just, that's the, I, you know, at least not that I'm conscious of. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah monica but uh yeah the goal of the trip is just you know to, to get hired and complete these different missions and the the uh the unexpected story twist at the end is all of this is a figment of the imagination of my imagination she doesn't exist it's just all coming out of my head um uh and uh and that is because the world has sort of apocalypse has occurred and what i'm doing is picking up cars and and just to keep myself entertained and sane I'm picking up cars and, and inventing reasons to drive back and forth with them. You had um, me right up until the story twist. Four points for you. Oh, why did you and not like the story twist? It's trite. It's been done. Exactly. See, that was my problem. It's been done. Everything's been done. Anyway, yes. Misty, bring okay. it Okay. All right. First of all, my uh, my cast is uh, Rachel White and um, Brendan Fraser as themselves. <gasps> Aww, as him. themselves as themselves yeah. oh. as themselves okay and they wake up in a hotel room with a letter in berlin and the bust of nefertiti and the keys to a 1980s citron dochevo dolly in cream and burgundy and they are told that if they don't get this statue back to the museum in cairo all of their filmography is going to be dumped 
in a vat of acid and there will be no record of their fame ever. <laughs> so they're going to drive down through Munich, down through Rome, take the ferry to Malta, take the ferry to Tunisia and Cairo. And along the way, they're being chased by people that keep trying to like blow them up and they don't know why. And they get to the museum at Cairo. And then we find out who the bad guy is, Dr. Zahi Hawass, because he wanted the fame of bringing Nefertiti home to Cairo because he's a attention seeking word we can't say on this program. I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> what word have we never said on this program? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which language do you want me to spell that in? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That that we're gonna give that one a six because you get a bonus for your bonus for your story twist. Thank you. We we can say whore on this program. Okay, so yeah, Z- Zahi who was attention seeking whore. Yeah. <laughs> right. In denim shirts and felt hats. <laughs> I like the two C V thing. That's cool. Yeah, because I think it's it's important that the show expand out and start offending people through international incidents. Exactly. We have to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. That, that's and the I point. love Rachel Weiss and Brandon Frazier. Yeah. They, yeah. I mean, they really had an incredible dynamic on screen. And the and, thought of a world without Encino Man would make it so riveting. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, actually, uh, the thought of a world without the mummy, which was responsible for the bisexual awakening of so many people. I mean, on. that's... <laughs> well, I mean, no, how, how, how can you not, you know, and then plus it's actually, you know, the mummy is a love story. He brought her archaeological tools. I mean, it was the sweetest thing ever, you know, and there were a lot of people that are like, Brendan, Rachel, Brendan, how am I supposed to choose? Oh, wait, I don't have to. And then you end up in your, you know, almost 50 years old wearing bisexual flag socks. Because it's what you do. Yeah. I'm going to call, I'm going to declare Misty the winner of this one. That, I think she wins. Yes, <laughs> that's a good call, Dave. Congratulations, Misty. What Thank does you. Misty get for winning today's uh, segment? Oh, the script to a road trip movie starring uh, Zachary Quinto, Lucy Worsley, and George Takei. <laughs> is this? You, is this? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Misty. Yeah, yeah, as they drive across country in a '74 Winnebago, you know, hitting all of the national parks. <laughs> Oh, there you go. You had me at Lucy Worsley. I love that woman. She's I love her. Hysterical. I love George Takei. Yeah, him too. Yeah. But Lucy is my history. I met him once. Ooh, do tell. Uh, well, it was no big deal. It was just at the autograph table at uh, Dragon Con. But, you know, but, but yeah, I talked to him in the moment. He was pretty cool. Uh, Brad, uh, Brad, is that his husband's name? He was there he too. Is. Uh, he was, you know, over, handing him the pictures to sign over his shoulder. And uh, and I saw him give his talk uh, at the event as well, which was fantastic. Nice. <laughs> Dave, this was good stuff. So that was your that was going to be your submission, Dave. With oh, the, if, I, with, if I if I had a submission, it would probably have been a, a road trip in a Winnebago with Zachary Kinta, Lucy Worsley and George Takai. George Takai, because I find him fascinating. Lucy Worsley, because I love her. And Zachary Kinta, just because, oh, my God, he's hot. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> you know, Lucy just had a new book out about uh, Agatha Christie. Yes, I saw that. I'm going to read that. That's on my list right after I read Invisible Women which is about data bias. Oh, really? It's a really good book. I had, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's like way over there. My headset won't reach that far, but I'll PM you the details. So far, it's like, I mean, I've already gotten into an argument with my husband about it, and I'm not even through the preface. <laughs> Excellent. I've got to read that. Thanks for the, the book. Now we, I, at the end of book review. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, uh, but- I've heard about the book. I've heard good yeah, things. Yeah, and it. yeah, and, and we can tie it in because it, it addresses things such as like, you know, women are 47% more likely to be killed in a car crash because really? the safety features, the safety features are designed for men. Yeah. Where the where the things where everything hits you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like, you know, you get like uh well, yeah, in Dutch they call it like a bag tit, you know, because you wear a crossbody bag and it like emphasizes your breasts, and that really offended a religious party in the Netherlands. So I do it all the time. That's what I do. Um, but yes, I mean, like the way the seatbelts come into our so wait cleavage. A minute. There's a religious party in the Netherlands that's offended by cleavage. Yeah. They also don't think women should have the right to vote. Oh, one See? of those. We, we've got me. We've got everything from communists to black stocking church people. You know, we are a diverse society for to be so small. And everybody just mostly points at them and laughs. Yep. So, you know, so that's what we do. 
That's it. Okay. Dave, this was fantastic. I, I, I was, I'm a little ashamed at how hard I wrestled with it to come up with something that was nothing more than a cliche. I thought I was a good storyteller and I was wrong. No, I think it was fine. You all did, you all did very good. <laughs> well, to go back to Misty's original thing about playing D and D I've been, I I've been involved in two different weekly D and D sessions and I DM one of them. And I, I'm, I struggle with it to try to keep it interesting and not just do things that are, are rote and cliche. And anyway, we're not talking about cars anymore, so I'll shut up. But um, what if you could do a D and D campaign and that's like the entrance to the dungeon is in a garage. Sh- sure. What's what cars are in the garage of a D and D campaign. It's a, it, it's, it's a garage full of nothing but rotary motors, <laughs> and, uh, automobiles. Aha. Uh-huh. Well, you know, I'm, and you have to weak. rescue the uh, inventor of the rotary motor. There was, or is, I don't know. I just looked this up. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Way back in 1980, anybody ever heard of Steve Jackson Games? Oh, yeah. Back in 1980, Steve Jackson Games published Car Wars. I have it. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It's a, you know, RPG about vehicle combat. But Dungeons and Dragons is, you know, typically about dragons and like medieval stuff and swords and doesn't really, I mean, depending on how you play, doesn't really even include any modernizations at all. You can do, you can, you can do cyberpunk, you can do yeah. steampunk, you yeah. know, but, but you have to rescue the inventor of the rotary engine who's being held captive by a cyborg Henry Ford. Played by Sandra Bullock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, no. All right. We, <laughs> we are petering out on this. Shall we answer the trivia question? <laughs> nice job at reca- recapturing control, Mr. Tsai. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so, okay. So the trivia question that we had at the beginning of the episode is, who made the last car produced with a rumble seat, a.k.a. a dicky seat in British parlance, and also the called a mother-in-law seat? Was that Plymouth, Ford, Chevrolet, or Triumph? Uh, Dave, you want to go first? You know what? I think it is Ford, and I'm basing that slowly on the fact that my father's first car was a 1938 Ford, and it had a rumble seat. And I want to say he told me one time that it was the last huh. rumble seat. Interesting. Okay. Don't make a liar of my father. I'm not. I, you know, I, believe, I believe your father. So, uh, Ben, what do you think? Uh, my gut says go with Triumph. I think I've seen a 49 Triumph that had one. <clears throat> of course, it's also interesting that they would call it a Dickey seat, since in Britain, Dickey often refers to something that's a little defective. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, I don't know why they chose that. Don, what do you think? I, I was actually going to go with the Triumph as well. Um, but my story about the Ford is my grandmother had a 1932 Ford with a rumble seat. And in the popular color of black, um, and she traded it in for a 1934 Ford with a full back seat covered so that she could take more friends to the beach with her. Um, and I have a longer story about how she got her license, uh, but she was an incredible driver. And so she she saved up her money constantly to buy new cars. She loved cars. Cool. That's where you probably where I got my love of cars from, including my dad. So, but I'm going to go with a Triumph because I recall in Germany seeing a Triumph with a rumble seat. Okay. Misty. I'm going with the Triumphs just so I don't have to say Ford. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Misty actually wins the show today because Triumph is correct. She, <laughs> she took the entire thing today. So well done. It was actually uh, the, it was called the Triumph Roadster or the Triumph 2000 Roadster. It was made until 1949, according to the information given to us by Trivia Czar Tim. Um, it was the first available as a Triumph 1800 Roadster and 18 TR from 1946 to 48, and then as the Triumph 2000 TRA from 1948 to 1949. It was designed in the closing days of World War II. Um, so I don't know how many have been produced. Apparently, it's very rare to find one. So, Ben, if you've seen one, that's pretty cool. I have in town, actually. It, uh, it's a beautifully restored white one that has shown up at some of the uh, British car shows in the Atlanta area. <laughs> okay, we'll have to go check this out someday. Yeah. Oh, um, oh my God. I, I, I just remembered I was I headed up to Amsterdam yesterday to pick up one of my six kids, even though I've only given birth physically to one. And we were coming back on the A9. And I want to say, I, I I haven't Googled to find a picture. Excuse me. 
<clears throat> but we were coming back on the A9 and we passed like a 1930s hearse. Whoa. You know, it ha- had like the big grill and the I'm going to, I'm going to Google and see if we can find a picture of it. And, but it was like, and, but both me and one of my bonus kids were like, Oh my God, hearse. But it was, had like the big arch grill with the yeah the honker headlights, oh. you know, the, it was, it was the coolest thing ever. And that was just my, <laughs> my moment with it. So it was serviceable. Yesterday. Were they still using it as a hearse? I don't think they were still using it as a hearse, but it was, I mean, it ran and it looked immaculate. Mm-hmm. So it was cool. very pretty. And we were both like, ah, because, you know, <laughs> you know, A, hearse, B, car, C, old car. So it was right, super, yeah. super awesome. It was super awesome. So thank you, Dave. This this segment was a lot of fun. And uh, thanks, everybody, for playing next week. I don't know what we're going to. I don't know how we're going to top that, Dave. It's just you've set the bar really high with that. <laughs> well, maybe, you know, somebody in Hollywood will listen to or Georgia um, film industry will listen and, and pick up one of us and run with the story and that's right um, and and cast all of our favorite that's actresses and actors beautiful I, yeah let's hope it's Zachary Quinto if you're here, out there call me <laughs> maybe Sandra Bullock is listening since we've mentioned her so many times <laughs> <Yeah>. right <laughs> we're gonna have to crash and she our has show her own notes production company quickly. so there you go there we go so good. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for hanging with us for this episode. Uh, If you have suggestions for future segments that we might tackle on the show, please contact us via our Facebook page or our website. And we will see you with another episode in about a week. Take care, everybody. See ya. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Thank you for listening. This has been The Thing About Cars. We'll see you on the road.